And thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, singers. Um, we are blessed. We're going to ask God just to move in a mighty way this morning. Uh, thank you for being here. I want to say thank you for the prayers um, for Brandon Stone who had surgery Tuesday, or Thursday. I'm sorry, had surgery Thursday. Surgery went a little bit longer than expected. Um, he was in surgery for about four hours, if I'm not mistaken, four and a half hours. Um, it was a long day, so I, I got tired of looking at the clock. But um, he got done about nine, nine thirty that night. And, um, he's in a lot of pain, and they please continue to pray for him. He's still in Columbia. Um, he should be coming home hopefully Tuesday if everything goes right. I'm not sure. Um, I talked to him yesterday, and um, he, he was hoping they'd get to come home Tuesday. But let's continue to remember him in prayer. Um, we got many more prayer requests. Um, Brother James, um, he's been real sick, so let's remember him. Um, continue to remember Sister Lori. She goes to have surgery Tuesday. Um, and she needs a lot of prayer, and then she'll start chemo right after that. So continue to remember her in your prayers. Many others, um, I know we have many here that need prayer. And we believe God still moves in prayer. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah, your Bibles, go ahead and turn to John 3. <coughs> John 3 will be in verses 1 through 8. If you don't have your Bible, it will be on the screen. Um, we're re reading out the King James Version. Um, so, John 3, verses 1 through 8. It said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, he must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listen, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it come and whether it go. So is every one that is born of the spirit. <laughs> this morning we're going to continue our series, Holy Spirit. Not, over the last couple of weeks and that last couple of months, <coughs> And I apologize if I start coughing up. Uh, uh, this allergies is coming, but I apologize. But over the last couple weeks and the last couple months, there's been a great weight on me about the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, church, I, I think we've been, we, we think about Jesus, we think about God, we, we know the Father, we know the Son, but we forget about the Holy Spirit. You see, as the Trinity, all three of them make them one. So if you're thinking about God and thinking about Jesus, you also need to think about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I, I think that we come to a time in society and a time and a place in this world where we need the Holy Spirit now more than we ever had before. You see, the Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit comforts us. The Holy Spirit shows us the steps that we need to go. And, and I know people have asked me about the election. And, and I'm not going to promote anybody. And I'm not going to put anybody down. But I'm telling you this, church. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us in the direction that we're going. No matter what's going on in the United States, no matter what's going on in the world, I've come to realize this. If we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, then we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about. Because when the Holy Spirit's in charge, we have a comforter that helps us in a time of need. Amen. We just came out of a series called Fear and Noia. And we talked about those things that keep us up at night. And church, I'm telling you, the best way to get rid of that fear and noise in your life is allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. <coughs> he is the comforter. Amen. Amen. He is the one that brings life. I love the, the book of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel gets over a, a valley of dry bones and he begins to prophesy and pray and begin to preach. And the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, came down and came upon each one that was in there. And they began to march like an army for God. Church, we need Christians that are going to stand up and march like the army of God. But the only way we can do it is with the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. With the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, I think it's something that we really need to get down to. 
understand what it's about. And because of this, I feel a tremendous need to learn to rely more fully on His guidance as the Spirit of wisdom and truth. That is why last week we said we need the Spirit with us, in us, and upon us. But over the next couple of weeks, as I began, as, I, as we as we spoke the message, I had more questions, which is great and awesome. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to really dig into what this means. You see, James four and eight says this, and there's a lot of scriptures today, so stay with me. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Listen, church, you have to draw nigh to God. You have to draw close to Him, and guess what? He'll draw close to you. You know, a lot of us just want him to show up, right? And he will just show up. But church, you got to make an effort. Amen? Yeah. Amen. you got to make an effort. Amen. If I put a, a billion dollars in the middle of this aisle, some of you going to make an effort. Amen. Some of you are going to be knocking out people. Amen. We'll, we'll see people be instantly healed. Amen. People that couldn't run will start running. Amen. Uh, uh, people that couldn't walk will start walking. Amen. We will see canes flying. We will see uh, all a million dollars. Because there has to be an effort for it. You know, we live in a society, Brother G, that we want everything handed to us. But God says, I can do that, but I want something. I want a commitment from you. I want a movement from you. I want a step from you. Church, if we ever need the Holy Spirit, we got to start drawing nigh to it. we got to start praying for it. we got to start praying for conviction on our lives. we got to start praying for sanctification to happen. we got to start praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost to happen. The, Jesus told the disciples, uh, the angels came down as Jesus went up and said, why are you standing here gazing? You know, a lot of us Christians are standing around gazing. Amen. Even though God says, go and tarry and pray. You see, God has called us to pray and seek after God. Seek after his prayer. Seek after him that, that is there to send the comforter. We have to draw nigh to him. James tells us that we need to draw closer to God, but we're unable to do that without the Spirit's help. And guess what? It all starts with the second verb. What I mean, it starts with salvation. This morning we're going to look at why we need to be changed and how the Holy Spirit is involved with the change. You see, the first thing I want us to understand this morning is why do we need to be saved? Have you ever told your child something when they ask you why you tell them? Because I said so. <laughs> I thought I would never use that until I had a four-year-old. <laughs> Don't do that. Why not that? Because I said so. I didn't really have a good response. I just told them because I said so. I just didn't want you doing that, son. You know, a lot of times we come to church and people say we need to be saved, but why do we need to be saved? You see, we think that everybody knows what that word means, Willie Gonzalez. We think that we know, that everybody knows what the word being saved is all about. But church, it's time that we, we live in a generation of why. You notice that? Why do I have to pay seven bucks for a Big Mac at McDonald's? It ain't even that good. <laughs> we still do it. Why do I have to pay $15 for my child to go to a farm so he can run around all day. He can do that in my house. Amen. <laughs> why? Why do I have to watch this? Why do I have to do that? And you know, we live in a generation of why. And the bad part about it is we tell people all the time just because we did it that way or we've done it that way. So this morning I want to look at why we need to be saved. Why we need this to be saved. You see, I've noticed a lot of the time we tell people they need to be saved, but why? You see, no, uh, nobody by nature delights so much in the character of God that he hungers after the true God. What I mean is when you were born, guess what? You were born in sin. Amen. Psalms 51 and 5 says this. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned, then they were cast out of the garden. And because they sinned, guess what? You have sin in your life. Amen? Amen. You see, when you're born, you don't just say, hey, I'm living for God. Amen? You look, you, when you're born, you have to take a step. You have to be changed. And because of Adam and Eve's sin, we're all born in this, uh, uh, in, in this sin. Something has to happen to us. If we are to be saved from the wrath of God, and that is we must be changed from 
from the inside out. The Bible speaks of this. Change in many different ways to help us understand why it must be done. One of those ways it tells us that we need to be changed is because we were once slaves of sin, but we need to become slaves of God. Amen? Amen. Romans 6, 17 and through 23 says this. But God, be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that formed of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free of sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to the iniquity unto iniquity, even as now yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye, ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and becoming servants to God, ye have your fault unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, Paul tells us that every man is the servant of the master to whom he commands himself to. You know what? We're living in a society where we're servants to money. Amen? Amen. We're servants to drugs, to alcohol. We allow those things to take over our life. We're servants to Facebook. Amen. 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 When you have to post your every thought on Facebook, man, you need to get rid of that bad boy. You better repent. Turn for real with you. Amen. We're servants to TV. Amen. Me and my wife, we've been blessed. We, we might be able to go on this trip. Um, somebody has given us a trip, which is great and awesome. But they told us the place that we're going to doesn't have a TV. Amen. Anybody knows anything about me? I can't sleep without a TV. Amen. I have to have a TV on when I sleep. And, and my wife said, what are we going to do? Just sit there and look at each other? <laughs> she said, because if that happens, one of us ain't coming back. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's probably going to be me. I ain't the one coming back. <laughs> but we give service to these things in this world. We, we give service to, to a hobby. I, it's amazing that we'll spend money and money and money on a bunch of 18 and 20 year olds out there throwing a football around. But we can't give to God. It's amazing that we can get excited about the Cubs going to the World Series. We can yell and we can chant and, and, and the streets were full. Hundreds and thousands of people were there, but the house of God is empty on Sunday morning. It's amazing that we'll put on war paint and put on outfits to go to a game instead of going to the house of God to celebrate what he's done in our lives. We become servants. It's amazing how we can go kill animals instead of come in Jesus' house. And I know we have some hunters, so I'm looking at you. Because they have guns. But it's amazing that we give up so much. We become slaves to so much in our lives. We can't give it over to God. You know the reason why? It's because when we were born, we were born into that sin. We were born into that thing that says it's not about God, but it's all about me. It's all about me. Church, it's not all about you. You know what? It, it, we need to get the mindset where I know what this world tells us, that you take up for you. You do whatever you have to do for you. But church, I'm here to tell you, we need to change that mindset. You take up for God. You have to do whatever you have to do for God. If that means kick yourself out of the way, if that means you're not as rich as you want to be, if you don't get to do this or get to do that, you give your life to God and he will bless you and he will guide you and there will be nothing to fear and the Holy Spirit will come upon you and it will make sure that you will not, you, you will get every promise that God has ever promised. And that is the biggest promise of all. And that is you'll have everlasting life. Amen. How many deer you get doesn't does it put your spot in heaven? But how much you give your life to? To God. And change your life forever. So one of the reasons why we must be saved is because we become slaves to sin. Another one of those changes is that we must repent. That is, we must experience a change of mind that calls us to turn from trusting men to trusting God's mercy. 
It is sad when we trust men more than we trust God. Amen. Listen. A man can tell you all kinds of things. You young ladies, I just want you to hear this. Amen. A man can tell you a lot of things to get what they want, but you better start trusting in God instead of trusting in man. Amen. You men, I'm telling you the same thing. Because there's ladies out there that are just as bad as men now. They'll give you anything that they possibly can give you and try to make you feel a certain way. But listen, I'm telling you, listen, stop trusting people and start trusting God. Because when you trust in God, God will show you what's right and what's wrong. And listen, church, I, I get asked all the time, is this right and this is wrong? Is that right and this is wrong? I'm telling you what, if you get into the Holy Spirit and start trusting Him, He'll show you what's right and what's wrong. He'll put a conviction on your heart and He will change. Listen, we don't want to be convicted. But church, we need to start praying for conviction. We need to start praying, God, show me what I'm doing wrong. God, show me where I need to improve. Listen, church, you don't look in a mirror to see how good you look. You look in a mirror to see what you need to fix, what you need to change about you. It is time that we start looking at the Holy Spirit and seeing what we need to change inside of us. Because church, it's not about what the world says. It's not about what the person down the street says. It's not even about what the pastor says. It's about what God says and the Holy Spirit says. And church, we start looking at that, God change us. That's the reason why we need the Holy Spirit. Man, we just get started. I got hurt. Woo! <laughs> Acts 2 and 38 says this, Then Peter said unto them, Repent! Amen. I just like that word. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Luke 3 and 3 says this, And he came unto all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sin. Luke 3 and 8 says this, Bringing forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and being not to say with yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see, Peter and John the Baptist both preached to repent from your sins, and trust in not just the people of this world, not just the law, but trust in God's mercy. Amen. I can tell you all day what's wrong, but you will never know it until you find out who the Holy Spirit is. The Bible also tells us the reason why we need to be saved is we must be born again. John 3 and 3 says this, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily. Amen. I just want to stop right there. You know what verily, verily means? That's like when, when, when your parent called out your whole name. Robert Bruce Weber II. That's my name if you didn't know. Clean your room. You know you better listen. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto him, <coughs> unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen. There ain't no finance for you, is it? <laughs> Just because you pay your tithes don't mean you're going to heaven. Now, it is a fruit of the Spirit of God inside of you, but that just don't mean, just because you pay a lot of money doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you help people doesn't mean you're going to heaven. The only way that you can go to heaven is you must be born again. That means you've got to let the Holy Spirit take over your life, <clears throat> take over your heart, and change you. You see, when we're born, we're born into sin. And the only way that you can get rid of that sin is that sin must die inside of you. You must allow that old nature to die inside of you. So you've got to let the Holy Spirit to come inside of you and, re and rebirth you. You've got to be born by the Spirit, just as Jesus said. And church, that's the reason why we need to be saved. You see, from cover to cover, the Bible declares that human beings must be changed. If we do not change, we will not be saved. What I mean is there's no peace with God, no hope for eternal life, but only wrath and fury if we don't come to God and be changed. So there's nothing more important for an individual than they experience this change, this new birth, as Jesus calls it. And when this new birth happens, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3 and 19, it says this, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Last week, we had an empty jar up here. And we asked the 
We, we took the jar and we filled it with water. And we talked about how a lot of people are empty, but then God fills them because God says, I am the living water. Amen? If you take a meat, you'll thirst no more. Amen? Church, that's the reason why we need to be saved. We have a thirst inside of us, and that thirst is usually for things other than God. And we need the God to come in and fill us up instead of being empty. But what does that mean about the Holy Spirit? You see, the second birth, this born again, only happens by the Holy Spirit. It only can happen by the Holy Spirit. You see, this new birth is the result of the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit preceding and enabling our first acts of saving faith. John Piper said it like this. He's a pastor, a, a very well-known pastor, and he said this. We do not know, we, we do not cause our new birth by an act of faith. Just the reverse. The cry of faith is the first sound that a newborn babe in Christ makes. Regeneration, as we sometimes call it, is all of God. We do not get God to do it by trusting Christ. We trust Christ because he's already done it to us already. The theological catchphrase, which are sometimes used to designate this beautiful doctrine, are our preventive grace, grace which precedes and enables our faith, or our irresistible grace, grace which overcomes the resistance of man. You see, church, I want to let you know, your faith can only get you so far, but the Spirit of God can change you forever. Right. Let's stop praying to have faith, and let's start praying for the move of the Spirit of God inside of us. Because when you have the Spirit of God inside of you, then you will have faith. Amen. You see, faith doesn't come. You know, we always say the thing, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Does it really matter? But anyway, they're all good when they're grilled, amen. <laughs> I will say this, the Holy Spirit comes before faith comes. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't have faith. I don't think a lot of us realize that. We tell people all the time, you've got to have faith. You've got to have faith that God will provide. You've got to have faith that God will take care of you. You've got to have faith that God will move in your life. You've got to have faith that God will change you forever. But church, if you don't have the presence of God, you'll never have faith to start off with. Because the presence of God is what guides you. Church, we need to start praying for that regeneration in our life, that move of God inside of your life. You see, to help explain this, let's look at our text today. Jesus tells Nicodemus in verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You see, being born once or being baptized is no guarantee of salvation. You must be born of the Spirit. You must experience a spiritual cleansing and a recreation in your life. And in verse 6 gives the reason why. John 3 and 6 says this, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. You see, church, the only way we can be changed is with the Holy Spirit inside of us. Holy Spirit inside. It's hard to understand a lot of times because we, we tell people, you just got to have faith, right? You ever told somebody that on the phone? You just got to have faith. <clears throat> God can take care of you. Just have faith. All right? We tell people that all the time. But you know what? We need to, we need to start telling them, you just got to have the Spirit of God. You got to have the presence of God. You got to have a move of God inside of you. Because if you don't, you can never have the faith that you need to continue to move a work of God that you need in your life. You see... We've got to have this inside of us. Before a per person can perform the best of all acts, he must become a new person. Thorn bushes does not produce figs. Apple trees does not produce olives. And guess what? A simple man does not produce faith. He cannot do it. As a matter of fact, Romans 8, 5 through 7, Paul put it like this. For they... That are after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. What he is saying that a fallen human nature cannot do the works of God. But the presence of God can change evil. Church, we could go on and go on, but I don't know why God's telling me to tell you this today. 
We've got to have a move of the Holy Spirit in our churches so people can get saved. There's probably over 100 people here. I know there's about 26 or 27 kids out in the children's house right now. We're praying for those children's workers. There's about four or five nursery uh, babies or maybe in the back, three or four, something like that, four or five back there in the back. And they're teaching the gospel, and they're teaching the gospel over here, and we're teaching the gospel over here. But church, you know what? We can teach it all day long, but you cannot have faith unless you have the Spirit of God inside of you. What are you seeking for? We sung the song, the more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. <coughs> I told you a story. I, I love the game hide and go seek. Because there's always one person that don't know how to hide. You know what I'm talking about. There's that one guy standing in the road going like this. <laughs> And you wait to go get him just so he'll feel good. You know? I play hide and seek with Elijah. I even try to play with Tanner, but it's really hard because he don't walk to crawl or anything. So he just lays there. But then you you go and you seek after him. You know, everybody wants to be seeked after, amen? Wouldn't you hate to go play hide and go seek and everybody just quit trying to seek after you? You think the game's still going on and three days later you're still still going <laughs>
after him. Seek after him. I love my wife to death. But when I first met her, I didn't have faith that she could be the woman that she is now. But when I got to know her, I realized who she was. Church, the same way with God. You get to know him, you'll feel it, you'll find out who he is. It's all you got to do is just ask him to come into your life. Ask him to change you. Ask him to come in and just convict you. Now, I know we don't like conviction. But church, we got to get rid of some, some stuff. Brother G, I come up hard. I kind of find it hard. The Bible says the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told him, if if you are my disciples, which that means you have given your life to him, that means you'll follow my commandments, right? I'll know that you love me by how you follow my commandments. So if I'm going to be a child of God, then i got to follow the commandments of God, amen? That doesn't mean I get to feel however I want to feel and do whatever I want. That means I have to change my life. I have to get rid of some stuff. I have to ask God to convict me. Now, just because I'm convicted of something might not be you're convicted of something, Amen? I mean, you might be dealing with something in your life, and I'm dealing with something in my life. But listen, if we keep striving towards God, God will convict us to get rid of those bad fruit and put in that new fruit inside of our hearts. Some of us got to get rid of some bad fruit. Some people ain't going to like me to say this, but just because it makes you feel good doesn't mean it's right. There's a lot of stuff that makes me feel good, right? I ate a funnel cake yesterday. <laughs> it made me feel really good until about 12 o'clock last night when that sugar hit me and I was feeling really bad it felt good for me when I was eating it but you see the results I'm going to have to work out a little bit more this week. Amen. so you say I didn't know you were working out anyway <laughs> Just because it feels good doesn't mean it's always right. Some of us, some of us have got to get rid of those things that feel good to have the blessings of God come in our lives. And those blessings of God might not be money, it might not be material things, but it is the Spirit of God. The more I seek Him, the more I find Him. The more I find Him, I love. I want to sit at his feet. Because I realize I'm not worthy to stand beside him. Every time I step into the presence of God, I'm like the woman that with the issue of blood. She said, if I could just touch the hem of her him and his garment, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be saved, I'll be changed. And praise God, she touched it, and Jesus said, Who touched me? And when the woman came back, she didn't stand there almighty. The Bible says she fell trembling. She realized the power of God was greater than anything she had ever experienced before in her life. She was, she was afraid because she knew that she has experienced something that she never experienced before. And God was changing her life right then at that one moment. We need the Holy Spirit. We sing a song that says, Holy Spirit. about in this church, but we welcome him here all the time. When I come in, I welcome the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about in your life, in your heart. Have you welcomed the Holy Spirit in your home? Oh, please. Some of us need the Holy Spirit in our homes, amen. You want to see a, a loved one change? Then allow the Holy Spirit to come into your house, amen. Allow the Spirit, you want to see somebody change in your job? Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your job. Well, Bobby, they told me I couldn't pray in school. Well, praise be to God, there's no ban on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-great. And he will bust through any of those things. He'll come into our houses and he'll change people. He'll come into our jobs and change people. He'll come into our loved ones, our children that we've been praying for. There's no prayer for anything but the Holy Spirit to hit our household so hard walk in the door, they feel something inside. Let's pray in our church. When people come to the back door, I love it. I love hearing people say, this is one of the most loving churches. That's great. That's awesome. But you know what I want people to say? When I walk through the back door, I felt the presence and power of God. I 